As the 2013 Husker football season draws near, not only is it talent, but experience and leadership. The players feel will be the strength of this year's squad. I think we have great leadership set in place. I mean, first year coaches put captains and we back every single one of our captains and we have a great senior class. I mean, we've all been around. A lot of us have played a lot of football on uh, both sides of the ball. And I think that that's what's really going to be able to lead us over the hump as far as just believing in the culture that we've instilled and believing in the leaders that we put and put forward as the face of the team. Him being such a great leader, you know, he kind of came to me and was like, you know, we could actually use you, you know, we should have been using you and um, we're going to look your way a lot more. And it kind of, you know, helped me as a player, you know, hearing that from, you know, the leader of your team, the quarterback, the guy that gets you the ball, it kind of does something to you. And that's, and that's what it did. And it helped me on and off the field as a person. I mean, I've taken that role since, uh, you know, the bowl game ended, we started winning workouts and spring ball. So, I mean, I've had fun doing it and it's made myself better as a player, as long as a leader as well. We're a pretty young team, you know, especially defensively. And it's not just me being assistant captain for the offense, you know. I try to voice my, my opinions as well as the young guys on the defense, you know, for them to understand uh, what our team is about, the, uh, you know, what we want to do, what we want to achieve this, this year and what it will take for us to do that this year. And uh, pretty much uh, it's, it's increased a lot. Got a lot of older guys, um, all older guys, besides maybe in that left guard position. And uh, we've all played together for, you know, four or five years, depending on who you are. And that really, you know, builds a lot of confidence for us. And uh, you, it really gives you a comfort level when you know what to expect out of the guy to your left and right. And, uh, and we work better as a unit than we ever have. And I'm just, I'm excited about what we can get done. Royals taking on the Mets in New York, hoping to head back to KC with another win under their belt. Top of the fourth, no score. Mike Moustak is in the box. He goes deep to right off Zach Wheeler for the solo home run. One zip, Royals. Top of the fifth, now 2-0 Royals. Alex Gordon sends a fly ball to deep right field where Marlon Bird loses the ball in the sun and it drops in for a hit. The runners end up on second and third. Next batter, Lorenzo Cain. He loops one into shallow right that drops in front of Bird for the two-run single. Royals now up 4-0. Bottom of the fifth, score now 4-1 Royals with the bases loaded and two outs. Irvin Santana fans Bird right here for the inning-ending strikeout. And the Royals win for the 11th time in 12 games with a final score of 6-2. Rockies visiting A.J. Burnett and the Pirates. Burnett on the fire. He gets Carlos Gonzalez swinging. Doesn't stop there. Michael Kadire goes down. Then here's Corey Dickerson out on strikes. And Troy Tulowitzki. He goes down swinging. Burnett gets run support in the bottom of the fifth, though. Russell Martin hits one deep to left for a three-run home run. Martin's tenth of the year. Pirates lead five-zip. Burnett still on the mound in the top of the ninth. Pirates up 5-1. to one. Todd Helton grounds into a double play for the final two out. Burnett ends the day with nine innings pitched. One run and nine strikeouts. Pirates win by a final score of 5-1. to one. And finally, Kearney Little League keeps raking in the wins at regionals in Indianapolis. Today, Kearney took on Urbandale and grabbed the 6-4 victory. They are now 3-0 in pool play and will face another 3-0 team. Coon Rapids Andover tomorrow at noon. That wraps up sports. We'll be right back with a final look at your forecast.